Hello, everybody. John is sick this week, and he has no voice. I'm Craig. I help John collect video for his space engineers' videos, and uh, I help him set up his ships and stuff like that. But that got me interested in space engineers, so when the filming is done for those, I generally go off and play with programmable blocks. And I fear a lot of you might not realize exactly what programmable blocks are capable of, so I figured I would go ahead and show you. And since John is sick, he can't stop me. The very first thing that interested me was drones. Drones are a lot of fun, but they're only good out to 5,000 meters, which is too short to be really very useful. You can use a laser antenna, but those are really finicky. So the very first thing I wanted to do was make a programming block that would reacquire a laser antenna connection if it lost the laser antenna connection. That was actually really easy. All I had to do was spin the ship whenever the laser connection was dropped. But I found something interesting. These laser antennas can tell you an awful lot about what's on the other side. So this laser antenna can tell me exactly where this laser antenna is in space. It can tell me exactly where this, this antenna is, and it can tell me what this n antenna's name is. Hmm. Well, obviously, that was a pretty cool little trick, right? So what did I do with that? Let's go ahead and look inside this little research station microcarrier and see what it's got. Bunk. Go inside. I'm not very good at doors. Here you can see that the microcarrier keeps track of the two possible connections it has. This connection is yellow because that ship doesn't exist. I deleted it. And you can turn on and off whether it wants to broadcast to these ships using these buttons. And uh, if you have a lot of ships, you can turn on groups of them using timers. Then you can tell it what commands you want to send. Oh, yeah, commands. Because you can change the name of your laser antenna, and that means that you can send commands by simply making that name your command. Let's go ahead and send this message here. Go to those coordinates, go to those coordinates, go to those coordinates, and then tell me to tell you to come home. I could just press this button. But let's go and ride along with the ship, just so that we can see it happen in real time. This is the working memory. Now you can see that we're going to disconnect, and now we're going to reconnect, and we're going to load up those commands into the right screen. And now we're going to go to those locations. Now piloting is... Um, I guess it's pretty rare for people who actually... Uh, it, it's, it's a little bit rare for there to be piloting, because it's not very useful, but it is a solved issue. You do have the capability to figure out exactly where your ship is and where it's headed using programmable blocks. All you have to do is ask bricks exactly where they are in space. So I've got a brick that counts as the core of the ship, and then I've got a brick that counts as the forward axis, and then I've got a brick that counts as the upwards axis, and you can just do some basic trig, and it'll work out, and you'll figure out exactly where your ship is, how and, and how it's uh, aligned. And using that, you can go anywhere you'd like. So that part was easy. A harder part was to get the ships to communicate with each other, which required these laser antennas to continually drop and reconnect, which, as you might understand, is a little bit rough. But it does work. So right now, I can contact home base and get it to give me new commands whenever I need it to. And if I pass beyond the 20,000 meter limit, the ship understands that it's too far away to actually contact home base. And what it'll do is it can actually come back to where it last saw home base. Because it knows how to fly. There is a risk of running into asteroids, but let's go ahead and ignore that for now. So we're getting real close to our final destination, and then we're going to tell it to tell us to come home. So we're going to see coordinates pop up. There we are. Now we're going to absorb those coordinates as soon as we reconnect. There we go. And then we're going to go back to the ship. And that's pretty straightforward. Now this drone is just a test drone, so it doesn't have any particular capabilities. But you can use this to create mining drones, military drones. You can even use it to create dr uh, uh, welding drones. I haven't gotten quite that far yet, though. You know, all of that was pretty boring. 
What else can these drones do that seems like it might be interesting? Hmm. Well, why don't we go ahead and take a look at some of the other commands that we've got available. I mean, this deck is covered in commands. Look at all this. Commands. Commands everywhere. Hmm. What are these? Backwards? As you might guess, backwards tells the, tells the ship to go behind wherever your ship currently is. So this carrier knows the way it's pointed and where it is in space, and if you tell Valkyrie to get behind it, then the ship will go, okay, well, what is behind me? Okay, I want to send it 300 meters behind me. And it understands that stuff. What else does it understand? Well, how about send the Valkyrie to a connector? Come on, just get out of there. I guess we'll watch from here. Yep. These ships can dock. That's all there is to it. So, that's pretty powerful, don't you think? These ships can dock and undock as you want them to, whenever you need them to. I think that is just nice. Let's go ahead and delete it. The reason that I haven't published these yet is because there's a memory leak, and I haven't quite hammered out where it is yet, but I'm going to go ahead and delete all the possible sources of the memory leak just so that I can continue on and show you this ship, which is the Odin's Nose. This is a vanilla carrier that has all the same capabilities as that uh, carrier I showed you earlier, the micro carrier, with the exception being this can hold 13 drones instead of just two. This is where you put the commands, and this is how you control all your drones. But I wanted to show you this ship because it has three more AI in it that can do things that you probably didn't realize were possible. First is a pretty basic one. Freya here can control all your batteries and oxygen stores to make sure that you never accidentally waste any power or oxygen. Tier draws your ship, draws diagrams of your ship, and also can keep track of which blocks are offline or damaged, and even if a block is completely destroyed, Tyr remembers where the block was and what it was, and can tell you. And this is Sleepnir. Sleepnir integrates engines into your ship's uh, normal operation. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean gravity drives or attached uh, engines from other ships, anything really. So if we were to go and look at the back of the ship here, I have all of these small ship engines. Small ship engines are eight times as efficient as large ship engines when it comes to providing, providing propulsion. But if you attach them to your ship, they don't fire when the rest of your ship fires. So, I mean, they, they don't, they, well, they do because I've got Sleepnir. Sleepnir is really, really um, on the ball today. But uh, normally speaking, those will not fire when you try and move your ship because they don't understand that they are attached to your ship and that they're pointed in a specific direction. Sleepnir integrates them into your basic maneuvering. It can also do this with gravity drives. That means that if I hit forward, I get the boost from all of those small ship engines, and it's roughly the equivalent of nine large ship engines, large ship large engines. And if I was doing a gravity drive, the exact same thing would happen. Shoo. And that means you can have really snappy ships. You can use gravity drives or small ship engines to actually uh, make your ships uh, have more maneuverability than they should. Rather than, you know, click a button to make your ship go forward, click a button to make your ship go backwards. What else does this ship have that is useful to drones? Well, it's got a turret. Now, what sort of use would a turret have? Well, I already told you that the, uh, that the research ship could actually tell a ship to go behind it. It could say, okay, I am in this point, at this point in space, and my forward axis is this axis, and I'm going to tell you to go behind me 300 meters that way. Well, this turret is set up the exact same way. So I can uh, just click a button, and I'll be able to send my drones out in a given direction, because the turret knows exactly which way it's facing. And that means that you can have a large carrier, and instead of having to turn your whole carrier to try and send ships forward, you can just use this one turret, or another turret, any turret you want, really. And that means it's possible to send all of your drones out in a one given direction and uh, uh, just flood the enemy with drones or, you know, hit a, an asteroid to mine it all or any number of other details. 
All of this is possible using programming blocks, and I don't know whether people really understand how powerful programming blocks are. You can do so many things with programming blocks, um, and I very rarely see them. I don't ever see people use them. I just want to encourage you to use more programming blocks. They're really cool. There are some downsides sometimes, like, um, like that memory leak I can't track down. But, all told, I had a really great time building these, and I think they're really neat. And I'd like to thank John for getting me interested in space engineers. And, uh, hopefully, he can use this video to uh, give him just a little bit of time to recover from his horrible, horrible disease. Uh, I think he has a cold. He'll be back soon.